Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I'm going to talk about using template bindings inside your control templates to give your control templates more flexibility in WPF. I'm going to start with a simple example here. I've got a button and I've got a few properties specified, a height and a width and, uh, and some content. So what I want to do is I want to replace the content template for this button. In order to do that, I'm going to open up the button tag and I'm going to come inside. I'm going to say button.template and I'm going to set that equal to a new control template. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that my designer up above um, changes. And now I just have a white rectangle or a transparent rectangle with just a gray border around it. And that's because I've told WPF to replace the control template of my button with whatever's inside my control template tag, which as of right now is blank. So we're not getting any visualization. I'm going to go ahead and change that. and I'm going to make it just an ellipse. And let's give it a height of, say, 50 and a width of 150. Um, and let, let's give it a, a background color as well so you can see it. Let's give it a fill. And the fill, uh, let's say, is light blue. Okay, so now that I've done that, you can see that we get a visualization for our button. And it's a light blue ellipse. Um, and this works okay, but, but where this starts to break down, you'll notice, is now when I go and change the height of the button, You'll notice as I change this to say 150, the gray square in the designer up above shows the amount of space that the button will take up, which is 150 pixels now. But the ellipse itself inside doesn't scale to, to be 150. Um, so this leads to you know a, a bad experience if I was using your template. And the reason this is happening is because inside our control template, the height of our ellipse is actually hard coded to be 50. So no matter what we set the height to outside here, um, the, the ellipse won't change size, even if the button itself takes up more space or even less space. You see that the ellipse clips in this case. So the, what we want to do is we want to fix this problem. And you can do that by using a special type of binding that's available inside control templates. And it's called template binding. So instead of hard coding the height of the element inside our, our template, we'll use a template binding and we'll say template binding. And what you'll notice is when I press space here, I'm not getting IntelliSense. Uh, I'm only getting th three options here, but I'm not getting the, the level of IntelliSense you'd expect. You'd expect to see properties on the button. Uh, and the reason for that is that I haven't told WPF what the target type of my control template is. Um, so WPF doesn't know what properties will be available inside this control template because it doesn't know what type of element that the control template is being applied to. So as soon as I say the target type of the control template is button, now when I come back in here and press space, now I get the IntelliSense that you'd expect. So I'm going to template bind the height property. And what I'm saying is the height attribute of my ellipse is template bound to the height property of the parent control, uh, the control that is being templated. And in this case, that control is a button. And its height right now is set to 50. So now you'll see when I change this value to 150, now you can see the ellipse in the designer respects that setting. And when I make it smaller, uh, it will respect that setting as well. So this gives you a better experience. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with this idea. And I'm going to change my width here to be template binding to the width. And I'm going to change my fill. Now on the fill, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to do a template binding. But notice, if I start typing fill, a button doesn't have a fill property. So there's not a one-to-one -one mapping in the, the names of the properties. But what the button does have is a background. And you'll see as soon as I change the background, the ellipse changed to use the default button background. So what I want to say here is I want to say let the, uh, the person using my template set a background property, and I'm going to bind that to the fill property of my ellipse. Now when I come up and I go ahead on my button and I say background, and let's say set it to light blue, now the ellipse changes. And I can change the color to green, and now I'm getting an experience that, that makes sense. So this might not be uh, might not look all that useful when the control template is nested directly in the button. But what happens when we pull this template out? I'm going to go ahead and cut this template and move it to the top and put it in a resources dictionary, which is going to be a little more likely how you're going to see these templates. Often they're not used directly in line. Um, they're stored off in a resources dictionary somewhere else. So I'm going to go ahead and paste our template. And I'm going to give it a key. And let's just call this a button template. And then I'll go down to our button itself, and I'll clean all this up. 
and I'm going to set the template attribute here to be a static resource reference to the template we just created. And now I can just close my button tag inline. Now this maybe makes a little more sense. Our template is off in a resources dictionary somewhere that maybe we're not looking at or don't maybe don't even have access to. And we want to start changing properties on our button directly and we want it to react as if it was a normal button. So even though we've changed the visual tree of the button, we've changed it to be just an ellipse, we still want the button itself to respect the property settings. So template binding gives you the ability to do that. Now we can do some kind of interesting things inside the template binding as well. Let's say that we wanted to enforce some behaviors on our on the look and feel of our template. So we'll go back up to our, our uh, control template here, clean this up a little. And let's say we wanted to make sure that the ellipse is always a perfect circle. We don't want to let you set the height and width independently. You can do that in a template binding pretty easily. What you would do is something like set the height and then template bind the width to whatever the height is. So you'll notice that it just gets clipped when I do that. But so what I'm saying now is the ellipse's height and its width is template bound to whatever the height value is for the button. So now when I come in here, I'll get rid of this width so it just fills. And now if I change the height around, you can see that I'm maintaining that perfect circle because I'm setting both the height and the width to the same value. So I'm enforcing a behavior on my control to keep it to be that perfect circle. So now you've got a template that respects what the user types in and you can even enforce some rules on your template without the user knowing. Um, so this gives a better experience for those consuming your templates. So that's it for template binding in WPF.